We've been doing the, the scripture of assurance for, I guess, since we came back from pandemic. And we don't often talk about why we have a scripture of assurance in a worship service. But I don't know about you, but as I worship in a day or, or, or live in a day and exist in a day, sometimes I just need to be assured every so often that what's going on is actually what I see going on in God's kingdom. It just is... So helpful to know that God's still in control, even sometimes when we feel so out of control. So we have a scripture of assurance this, this, uh, each week to just rest assured that God is with us in this thing. This is 1 Kings 17, 8 through 16. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town... A widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Bring me a, a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand, too. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you've said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me and afterward make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied and the jug of oil will not fail until the day of the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said so that she as, she, as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied. Neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. Why didn't God speak to somebody who had something? Why you got to pick her? Like, I never, I, I, I have stuff written here that I'm supposed to say. It's the bold part. And I suddenly realized... I'd never ask that question. Why her? Why? Pick somebody who's got a dollar or two. You know? And yet it's her. King Ahab stole the land from commoners. The guy that was the king that was in control. Allowed worship of Baal. Stood against the prophets of Yahweh. He was a horrible king. Elijah spoke against him. And here comes a drought because of it. Uh, he, so he stopped by a river. Elijah did until it dried up. And then we have this scripture. Later on, her son dies, and she wonders if Elijah is a prophet at all until he resurrects the child. My point, there's lots of suffering in this book. There is so much suffering. And other than a small blessing of food, you wouldn't even know in this story that God was in the blessing business. And yet the promise is that there is always a deliverance in the dark. Even when we can't see it, it's there. It's always there. It's right there in every moment. So if it's dark for you, reach out and grab it. If only a morsel at a time, grab it. Because God will deliver us. God is and God will. Let's sing again.